and welcome back YouTube, this is Boosterbacksbuster here with another video. Today I'm going to be doing something a little bit different, and that is going to be doing a little bit of a rant style video about PSA and grading companies in general. When I say grading companies, I mean anything from card games, comic books, and video games, especially video games. So, I know a lot of people like to grade their product. If you get cards, you are seeking that elusive PSA or CGC or Beckett graded uh, 10, that coveted 10 out of 10, where it takes a card's value and pretty much doubles, triples, quadruples, just absolutely increases the value multiple multiple times a raw card or video game or comic book value. Now, in my opinion, I think it's really silly that people would pay that much of a premium for a graded collectible. A graded collectible that's put inside a plastic clear coffin never to be interacted with again. I think that that's just absolutely bonkers that people pay that price. <sighs> and I don't like it. I do not like the idea of grading product like that. And especially don't like how much it fluctuates and demands on the market between a 9 and a 10. It's like, oh, if it's a 9... Well, you know, it's worth some money. If it's a 10, it's worth a lot of money. I, I don't understand, you know, when, when there is very, very little differences between a 9 and a 10. I, I don't understand why people pay that much more of a premium for it to say a 10 instead of a 9. I, I just don't understand the hype around it. It's like, oh, you know, a 9's worth 500, but a 10's worth 1,000. I, I, I don't understand why people pay so much more for one grade difference between a 9 and a 10. Honestly, to me... If a card grades a 7 or higher, I would be happy with that. But if it's a 7, if somebody gets a PS grade A graded 7 and they think that it should be a 9, they're going to flip out and be like, this is unacceptable. It was damaged in the mail. I'm going to get my money back. It's like, really? You, you really think that that 7 is a 9? I, I, I don't understand why people get so bent out of shape about one number. And they're like, oh, this is totally a 10. I got a 9. I'm going to crack this open and resubmit it. it. It's just ridiculous bonkers how obsessed some people get about chasing that 10. And I'm going to tell you why I refuse to grade any of the cards that I own or buy any graded cards or video games, and especially video games. I think that's so stupid that people grade uh, sealed copies of video games. You, you, you don't really need to. If it's authentic, it's real, you don't need to grade it. Because, you know, all, you, all you're doing is just putting it in a plastic case that you could buy yourself. It, it, oh, but it's guaranteed by the company. Well, guess what? We'll get into this a little bit later, but it's not always the case that it's guaranteed to be an authentic piece by the company. Alright, so... Uh, the first part I don't like is the mailing process. The fact that you have to mail it through a mailing service to PSA. And the reason for that is, one, it could easily get lost in the mail. Packages go missing all the time, either through corrupt mail carriers, because they just realize that, hey, this is going to PSA, or this is a highly collectible item, you know, they may see an opportunity to uh, earn some money on the side by taking the product and having it go missing in the mail. Second, it could easily get damaged in the mail through either weather, but although weather, it had to be really extremely bad weather for that to happen. Because uh, usually it's pretty well uh, secure in there. Or, and this is true especially for uh, video games, if they place a very heavy object or a very, like, sharply uh, 
cornered object on top of your package. Especially if they just take it and they just drop it like this, like from a good height. Not, not really taking the care and time to uh, read the fragile part of the package. Uh, guess what? You could have, that could crease the card, that could bend the card. That, for video games, that could easily damage the box, especially if it's like an old Nintendo card, a cardboard based box like NES, SNES. Good luck uh, having that survive uh, the mailing process in 100% of the shape that you sent it in. Cards are a little bit e little bit easier because those typically go into like envelopes and uh, those can survive a lot more, or hard boxes and those can survive a lot about a lot more uh, roughness than a video game box could. So part two, getting damaged in the mail or getting or the first part getting lost or stolen in the mail. Uh, part three, when it arrives at the facility itself, there's a lot of things that could potentially go wrong. The first part, uh, somebody may be careless and not you take proper uh, care like of their selves. Or they may forget to put gloves on, or whatever it may be, and your card ends up damaged by the recipient. Whether it be through oily hands, uh, maybe they're grading quickly because they're overwhelmed by the amount of submissions that they're getting, and they end up uh, putting something on top of the card, or putting it inside the packaging, or the case wrong and it gets damaged one way or another things happen like that now if it if it happens at their company they do say that they have a pretty much all of them say that hey if we damage your card we will reimburse you for the price of the card however if it happened pre-grading how can you know the price of the card because everybody's like oh yeah i had a psa 10 you got a reimbursement for the price of a T psa 10 and it's like you can't guarantee that because they didn't have a chance to grade it. So I, I don't understand how uh, they decide the value of damaged product like that. And anyway, unless you're a person that's just looking to, uh, to grade it and flip it and not put it in your collection, if, if you're a person that wants to put it in your collection, you want the card more than you want the money, and you're just going to be upset that you're card got damaged in the PSA or other card grading service or video game grading service process. The next part. Uh, let's say you have a very savvy person working at one of these grading companies and they decide, well, they're going to bring in some highly high quality fakes and they're just gonna swap them out with yours with the fake and they're gonna take the real one home with them now this as far as I know has never happened but there is always a chance that something like this could happen especially with how volatile the market is right now and how hot trading cards are The third is the price. It's, I believe, $20 minimal per card, and you got to send in, uh, I think, 20 cards at a time. It's either 10 or 20 cards at a time. So basically, you're minimal spending $200 every time that you send uh, PSA or cards to get PSA graded or whatever other service you use. Now, if you're grading uh, very high-end cards... It may be worth it, but if you're grading, if you're just trying to grade an entire set of cards, like, I don't know, like, getting a PSA graded uh, common card from Yu-Gi-Oh, it doesn't matter what common card it is, there's no way that a PSA graded common card from Yu-Gi-Oh would be worth it. Or any graded com company, for that matter. It's just not worth it. 
uh, to grade lower quality cards. The only things that would be worth it, in my opinion, is if a card is worth, like, highly absurd amount of money from, uh, well, like, like it has to be, like, worth, like, a thousand dollars raw. And then I'd be like, okay, I could see someone grading that. Or it has to be worth, uh, or it has to be, like, incredibly rare, like, less than a hundred copies of the card exist. Okay, I could see someone grading that. But, other than that, I think it's incredibly stupid to grade, uh, cards like that. So, th that was the next thing, the price. The next point I want to hit, uh... So, now, now this is not on this, but it's like buying uh, graded cards. People say that if you spot, if you buy a PSA graded card, that means it's guaranteed to be authentic. Wrong. It has been proven that people have sent cards into uh, the grading companies, and they ha uh, fakes that they'll mix fakes in just to see if they get through, and they have gotten through. So even if you send your uh, even if you buy one online, a PSA, or, or not a PSA, but any graded company card online, it could be fake. And people are getting very savvy. They're also uh, cracking open the cases, taking the labels from them, putting them in their own <coughs> uh, specially made case. So the label is real. It'll say PSA graded 10 or something, and they'll either put a really high quality fake in, or they will just put a very less quality card in there, like a 7 or something. Uh, just to make a lot more profit because it has an authentic label. You can say that it's an authentic label, but it's not authentically sealed by PSA. So, <laughs> so you, you, just because it's graded by PSA or other grading card companies doesn't mean that it's actually an authentic card. It has there have been cases of people doing that just to see if Ace can get through, and they have gotten through. So, even... So... And then, uh... The other thing that I want to point out is... So, P, so PSA and other grading card companies are heavily overwhelmed. Uh, they have so many people going through them, you know. Because everybody wants to get it graded because they want to just flip it on the secondary market. I think that's so stupid. I don't like flippers. And what's happening is... Well, not what's happening. What could happen, let's say if they have a stack of cards, right? And somebody else's stack of cards. Well, some people submit the same things because, you know, they think that they could get good PSA gradings on them. And let's say somebody has a 9 and somebody has a 7, and then they accidentally swap them. They send the person who sent the 9, the 7, and the person who sent the 7, the 9. Now you say, well, that can't happen. Oh, if there's a will, there's a way. Anything can happen. Nothing is impossible. Babies get swapped at birth. Cards could get swapped at, at a grading company. And then there's, because it's, they're both authentic cards... The person who sent in the seven is going to be very happy with the nine. The person who sent in the nine is going to be pissed off. And uh, there's really no way to prove that it's a... That... That... You know, it's a different card. There, there's no way to prove it. And there's also been stories of cards getting put in, uh, put in the slab upside down. That's not a big issue. It just, you know, it does happen. It's just more a mild annoyance... And there's also been issues where, uh, like, sticky notes and stuff have been le le attached to the back of cards and been sealed with the card in the case. Because it's a clear case on both sides, you'll see that. So, and I also want to say, I also want to say a little piece on video games. I don't understand why at all people grade video games. I think it's incredibly stupid. Uh, if it's a sealed game, it displays perfectly fine on a shelf. Just put it in one of those uh, cheap, like, uh, dust protector 
plastic uh, containers and you're good to go. You don't have to worry about anything. If it's... I never understood why people pay so much money for graded games. I think it's so stupid. A game is meant to be played. If you want to have a sealed copy of a game, fine. It doesn't need to be graded. They're... Because once again, grading companies are not end-all be-alls. They cannot 100% verify if a game is authentic or not, or resealed or not. Because really, really good fakes and really, really good resale jobs are happening a lot more often. People are getting incredibly wise as to how to do it. So in my opinion, graded video games should not exist at all. People that pay a lot of money for them, I, if you do that, whatever, but I think you're just, there's a lot better thing. You could buy a sealed copy of the game that's not graded for so much less money than a sealed copy that is graded, and you could, guess what, you could put that money that you saved toward another sealed game, or multiple unsealed games just complete in box. Never ever thought about that. <sighs> like I said, I, I, I guess I just never found the hype of sealed collecting for video games. As long as it has a box and manual for older games, it has a box manual game, I'm perfectly happy with it. As long as it's authentic, which I will say, uh, fakes are getting better for for the video game market, especially disc space. It's really hard to tell, uh, fake disc space game, except for GameCube, I think that's a lot easier to tell, but disc space games are very hard to tell apart. Uh, cart based games, for the older style ones, you could open them up and just do an in inside check. Uh, DS games, like, stuff like that, That's those are getting hard to tell apart too, unfortunately. So if it's, e but even if it's sealed, it's not guaranteed to be real, just... Or even if it's authenticated, it's not guaranteed to be real. Just keep that in mind. <sighs> I don't know. I just wanted to rant a little bit about grading companies in general. But I do have to say at the very end of this video, although I would never buy a graded card, I would never grade my own cards. And I... I video games don't even t talk to me about that. If, if anyone... If somebody gave me a C, uh, graded video game, I would crack that sucker open. I'd be like, I'm not keeping that in the box. I'm opening that up. Uh, if it's sealed and it's a game, you know, game I don't have much interest in playing, I'll put it on my shelf and be like, thank you for uh, giving me that game. I'm not keeping it graded, but I will uh, keep it sealed. If it's opened, I'll, I'll play the game probably. Or if it's a game I really, really am interested in playing, I'll, I'll open it up. Heresy, I know. Uh, for cards, like I said, if it's a really low print, like a hundred, a thousand copies or less of that particular card, I could see, uh, I can understand people wanting to maybe grade it. If it's an incredibly expensive card, I can see, under, I could, I can understand people grading it. But that's the only exceptions. You should not be grading cards that are worth like five dollars on uh, ungraded. <laughs> that's completely pointless. Um, honestly, like I said, I have a high threshold too. Like it has to be like a thousand dollars raw, and then I'd be like, okay, I can understand you want to grade it. But if I were to ever grade any of my uh, cards. Because I don't trust the mailing process or the people at the facility, I would have to take the cards myself, take it to whatever grading company is grading it, watch them grade it in person, and then uh, take them back with me. I would not ship it through the mail. There's just too too many variables that could uh, happen from uh, in the journey. <sighs> so I talked about... Uh, I will say this. I do own some graded comic books, but that's because uh, they're alt arts, they're limited edition, there's like a thousand, a thousand or less copies of each, uh, and they're unique arts, they're not like everyday art, and I do think that they display nice on a wall. 
A card is much harder to see from far away. A comic book, you could see that from much further away and see a lot of the detail. And if it interests you, you can get closer and look at it. A card, you have to get really close to it at the wall. So I, I will say that I will potentially buy uh, graded comic books, but it has to be for a good deal. I will never grade a comic book myself for the reasons I mentioned for cards and for uh, video games. It's, like I said, video games so stupid. I know this video is going to ruffle some feathers. It is what it is. But, yeah, I, I've been wanting to make this video for a long time. I hope you guys enjoyed this rant about grading companies in general. And, uh, let me know in the comments down below what you guys think. If you guys think that grading cards and, uh, video games and comic books is a good idea, uh, tell me why I'm wrong. If you think that, if you agree with me, let me know. And if you have a different opinion, hey, that's good to know too. Everybody has a different opinion. My opinion is I don't grade cards because there's too many variables and I think it's just a waste of money for a lot of the stuff I personally collect. Like, I mean, come on. Would they even accept cards like this? It's a Japanese card. Like, nobody... Never had an American release. Would they ever accept... Because they wouldn't know how to tell if it's a real or not. I mean, there's a lot of different uh, authentication processes, and there's no way for them to guarantee that that card is real, even though I open it up myself from a sealed booster box. Pokemon Yu-Gi-Oh! MTG. There's so many fakes flowing around now. It's just uh, bound to happen that more fakes are going to get graded over time. And people won't know that they have a fake card. Well, this video has gone way long. And yeah, I'm Boosterbacks Wester. I'm signing out. Leave a like if you want to. And leave a comment if you want to. Peace.